one. Hey guys, what's going on? Brandon Janice with The Start Guys. I'm so excited for today's guest. This is just super, super cool to me um, for a couple of reasons. One, I think she'll be the, the, the first and last um, woman that's played in the WNBA that I'm ever going to interview uh, <laughs> as a part of this, right? Um, she, she went to Vanderbilt. I think she was the all-time leading scorer at Vanderbilt. She's kind of a big deal in the basketball world. Um, but has – and we could talk about that. We could talk about all the, the challenges and the struggles that it took to be where she was and to dominate in college and to play professionally and play in Europe, I oh. believe. So there's so many things we could talk about with that. But that's not where we're going to go with this. Uh, because she's more than a basketball player. Let's put it that way. She's so much more than a basketball player. She's done so much. And, you know, the reason I reached out to her is because, you know, I creepy follow people on Facebook, and she was one of those people I'd follow. And I was like, gosh, I'm just so inspired by her drive, by her determination, by her attitude, by her spirit, by everything that she embodies. And so I reached out to her on Facebook and I said, hey, I, I, I met her, we met one time, right? We met one time in Houston, yeah. sat there and had lunch and, and hit it off. But <laughs> yeah, but it was just a cool thing and the timing's just perfect. And I'm not gonna spoil her story, but I do wanna introduce y'all to Chantel Anderson, absolute stud and, and and i'm gonna let her share your story with you and what she's up to and, and how we can be involved in and how we can participate but what i will tell you is that she has conquered big after big after big after big and she's not afraid to start and that's what we're going to talk about today so Chantel, if i missed anything or you want to cover anything in your past great but i want to know you know what is your big today because you've done a lot in your life and you've had a lot of success but what is your big what are you doing what are you working on right now what's big to you today man well first of all thank you for that awesome introduction like i hope i can live up to it today <laughs> but <laughs> thank you so much for having me um i am really also inspired and excited about what you have going on here with the start guys encouraging people to start and go after yeah. their big so Thank well, you thank so much. You. I'm so excited to be part of that right now. So um, for me, as, as far as what my big is right now, is this new world of full-time entrepreneurship. Yes. And so, yes, I jumped from a career in medical device sales, uh, spent four years there, almost four years there, and I jumped recently into full-time entrepreneurship at the very beginning of March. And so that is my big is um, continuing to build what I'm calling like a confidence empire. So I want to build platforms and resources that will be the go-to for confidence and go-to for empowerment in every area of women's lives, but men can use it too. So... <laughs> Well, let me ask you something. So you had a very secure job that paid well, that was comfortable, you know? Yeah. And so what was, the, what was the, the, the tipping point that you're like, okay, I have to go do yeah. this. Like this is like the turning point or the tipping point or why was it so important that you focus all your energy on this new thing? And I don't think you mentioned what it's called, but what, let's give it a name so we know how, yes. to, how to see it. <laughs> what was it again? I'm sorry. Visible confidence. Visible confidence. Okay, so what was it that, that made you think, okay, I'm going to leave all that's comfortable behind, right, and go do this thing? Right. Um, that's such a great question because I think a lot of times we have this thing that we want to do, and we're like, we're scared to kind of go, and we're like, okay, when do you know when that point is? And so for me, I had this job, and I had been building it on the side for a while, and to the point where I was kind of working two jobs. And really I was working three jobs because I, and we talked about this offline, but I, I co-lead a ministry at church. Yeah. So that's like its own job. And then, <laughs> and then there was Stryker. So there was my, my medical device sales job, which is a, a whole lot, it is an intense <laughs> job. But then you're building this like, this little baby here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like having a, you're trying to, to figure all that out. And so it got to the point where there was so much going on and there was so much I had to do for my growing business that I didn't have time to do all three. And so at that point I was like, okay, it is either stop growing this or yeah. I got to all the way in and just see if it'll work. Wow. Because I think sometimes we have these things in the back of our minds and it's been there for so long. And it gets to the point where 
you know it's not going away. Yes. So I got to that point where I'm like, okay, this is not going to go away. So I either have to forget the dream and mm. like suppress it and push it away and forget it for the rest of my life. And I'm going to live with that what if, wow. or I have to try it. Yeah. There's no more sitting on the fence here. And I got to that point and I was like, I refuse. This has been with me as long as I can remember. Mm. I refuse to forget about it. If I fail, at least I will get rid of that what if. And it got to the point where I was like, okay, so I, I kind of weighed the, and I'm not sure if I'm a answering more than No, your this question. is great. Keep going, keep going. Um, this is good. This is good. Okay. So <laughs> I got to the point where I kind of weighed the positives and negatives. And I was like, okay, what's the worst thing that could happen, right? The worst thing that could happen is that I fail, right? right. I fail and it doesn't work. And I have to go back and work for someone else for the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, if I don't try, I'm going to be doing that anyway. That's, <laughs> right? That's so true. And I'm going to have the what if the, my whole life doing what I would be doing anyway if I failed. So like it was a, it was a no lose situation for me. Right. And it got to the point where I, I realized that and I was like, well, that I, I got to do it. Wow. Well, you know, it's so funny because I think a lot of, <laughs> I, I think a lot of people that are watching are in that same spot. Cause I know I've been there many times. Like you, you had this great job and you loved your job. There was nothing bad with your job. It was a good job and you, and, and you were helping people, but yeah. it may not have been your purpose. It may not have been pursuing yeah. your passion and like, like, man, like it's amazing. Purpose is a cool alarm clock. Like I just wake up excited. You know what I'm saying? I don't ever have to wake up. I just wake up. Yes, let's go. Right. And yeah. so, um, so that's, that's so cool that you say it like that. Now, what was the, what was the hardest thing? I mean, what, what is, what do you fear the most even today? Because this is, this is big, man. Like you, you, you know, I love what you said. Worst case scenario, I fail. And it's not like I can't go get a job. You're very hireable. Right. But the thing is, once you taste entrepreneurship, you almost become unemployable. Because you're like, man, this is, this is so cool. This is what I love. Right. So, you know, what would you say the biggest, um, you yeah. know, the biggest thing now, like that, 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 um, that's tugging at you or that may be hard or, you know, anything you can share with people that are in your shoes and have uh -huh. this thing, have this big, but aren't going for it because of such and such. So anything else you can shed light on that, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you that like once you taste entrepreneurship, you're like, bruh, I can't go back. <laughs> like, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think I, I was I was blessed on one hand that I had a job that was that was freedom in a way. Sure. Like sales, I got to make my own schedule. I was, right. you know, in and out. And so it was freedom in a way. And so and I was hundred percent commission. Okay. Gotcha. And so one day I was working out and it clicked and I was like, wow, entrepreneurship is a hundred percent commission. Yeah. And I've been working a hundred percent commission job for the last almost four years. Wow. So it was like, I, was, I wasn't, I wasn't quitting my job. I was hiring myself away from my job, wow. from my current employer. Wow. That's and good. I'm so going like, that. <laughs> yeah. <Good. laughs> Go ahead. I've, I've heard a couple other people that say it too. So it, it's not mine. I can't take credit good. for it. But when I, when I was in the gym, it just clicked. It was like, Oh my gosh. I've been doing this already for the last four years. I've been making somebody else money mm. and I've been selling for someone else. I've been calling on people for someone else and not for my dream. And so I don't know if you've heard that quote, like you're either building someone else's dream or you're building yours. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it just got to the point where I was just not willing to continue putting away time in somebody else's dream. But I think that the fear that kept me from doing it for so long, even after I realized that like, okay, what's the worst thing that can happen? You sure. go back and you get a job. Well, you have a job anyway. The worst thing we worry about is what will other people think mm. if I fail, right? Because mm. it's not just that you go out, you try it, you fail and you go get another job. We're like, oh my gosh, I like I failed. I jumped out there. Everyone saw me jump out there. Yeah. And now I have to go back like with my tail between my legs, uh, like, run back to corporate America. I was just talking to my sister about this the other day. Yeah. And um, I think that's the biggest fear 
it's not the fear of failure. It's the fear of what everyone will think about your failure that keeps so many people paralyzed. Yes. And so for me, <laughs> that's what I had to realize is um, I had to talk myself into it because number one, like, oh my gosh, there's a quote and it may be from Gladiator or something, but it's like the one in the arena is the only one that has something to say. You know, there's yes. all these people in the fans, yes. like, have you ever, like, in a sporting event or watching a game on TV, and people who go and who've never played a sport in their <laughs> lives are trying to tell LeBron James, like, what yes. he should do. Yes. And you're like, bruh, you don't play basketball. <laughs> like, stop. You, you, <laughs> right? you, act like that, you act like that happened to you like, while you were playing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was all <laughs> a little anger there. <laughs> I'm like... You've never played. Yes, I love it. <laughs> and so, like, I think that we have to draw that same parallel. Like, so often we are too worried about what other people who are doing nothing will think about us doing something. Wow. And it's like, no, if they don't have the courage to do it either. Yes. And so they might have something to say, but who cares? I tell myself this all the time. Like, do they pay my bills? Mm -hmm. If they, if they don't favorite. think I'm cool or they don't think I'm good enough or they don't think, how is that going to affect my life? Because bottom line is it's not. No. And so it's about having that constant conversation with yourself because you don't just have that conversation one time. Sure. You have it. You fight that doubt and yes. that conversation on a daily basis as an entrepreneur, no matter how confident you are. Yeah, you know, it's right. funny, Chantel. Oh, you're so right. It's funny because people people celebrate, um, I don't want to say average, but celebrate normal. They celebrate when you get the job. They celebrate when you, you know, you, you have that nine to five. But when you start something that's different, people are really hesitant to, to they don't quite understand, well, what's she doing now? Is this thing going to work? You know, I don't know if I want to support this thing, right? It's really weird how that works out. Um, but another thing I want to ask you about that, because you said you have to tell your, remind yourself daily. Like, you know, yeah. this is a big thing. What about your circle? Do you have a circle that you surround yourself with that is also that support system that, that believes in you, that, that, that knows that this thing will work? That's, that's um, you know, I think that we call it the circle of five or whatever that may be, right? Because yeah. uh, no matter what we think, there's people that are, that are rooting against us. And that's a sad thing. You know, like, yeah. the, like just, you know, when you play basketball, you know that some are rooting for you, some are rooting yeah. against you, but even in entrepreneurship, it's weird. Like people are rooting against you and it's kind of an uncomfortable thing. Right. But so, so you are telling yourself these things, but how important is it to surround yourself with like-minded people that are supporting your, your, your vision and your goal and your purpose? Yeah, man, that is so important. So I think there's three types of people in our lives. There are the people who are actively, like the people you mentioned, who are actively like, I hope you fail, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because, and, and that just means they're not happy with who they are, sure. right? They, like, let's be real. Right. But I think that is a smaller percentage than we think. Sure. Because I, in the big, the big middle is people that aren't rooting against you, but it's those people that are scared to cheer for you. Right. And they're scared to cheer for you because they don't want to get their hopes. They don't want to put their hope in something and then be disappointed. Ah, interesting. It's yeah. Really nothing to do with you. It's like they want you to succeed, but life has made them cynical. Wow. Yeah. And so they don't have the courage to hope. And so I think that like, I realized that I have to give people like, I can't look down on those people. Sure. Sure. Because, give them like, grace. Those actively cheering against me like okay forget you like yeah what i'm yeah. just gonna be wrong I, I know where you're coming from yeah but those people in the middle like i don't fault you for that i know that life has taught you sure that it's dangerous to hope for things because sure. we've all been taught that, right um but i think then there's that, that inner circle that you mentioned and that people those people that you surround yourself with that you cannot do it without right. and i do have those people like there are people in my life that when I'm feeling down like like a week the first week <laughs> I um, left my job I was like oh my gosh <laughs> I, I love like, I love what I did but then there were moments where I freaked out and I was like I just need to go get a job yeah and my best friends was like you have a job stop it 
Go do it. I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And once that, and then it was back to normal, it was back to work. But it, it, it was like, we need that reminder that no, you have a job or no, you're going to do this or no, you don't need to, you know, you made yeah. the jump. And um, another one is my sister. Like you need those people in your life that are also chasing their dreams because we definitely like draft off each other. Like it happens in swimming and running sure, and sure. Yeah draft off each other's like as you're going and so there'll be times when i am like super fired up i'm like man this happened and this happened and this happened and i'll talk to my sister and she'll be like man i really needed that inspiration like yeah. i thank you i need to get back to chasing this because i don't want to be like the little sister that gets left behind right? <laughs> like it's yeah. like that competition that good motivation sure but then sometimes i'll be like mom uh, this sucks like yeah. i don't want to do anything and then my, I'll talk to my sister and she'll be like, yo, I just did this and this and yeah. this new idea. Heck yeah, let's go. Like, because yeah. I don't want like the big sister that got left behind, you sure. know? So like, we definitely need those people. No doubt. And I love what you said there too. We think so many people care about what we're doing but we're not that cool. Like nobody, like most, like you said, there's only very few that are really hating on what you're doing. You just feel like it. People do, you know, but you're right. Yeah. Most people are in that middle ground and they don't know how to feel, but we just think oh, if they're not supporting us hundred percent, they must hate on what we're doing when that's really not the case. Yeah. A lot of them just don't care. Number one, yeah. cause we're not that cool. Or, or number two, like you said, they don't know how to act. So I loved how you said that. That's a really cool way to look at it. Okay. So I want to transition a little bit. I want to know a little bit more about what you're doing. Tell us more about your project and, and the confidence project and the things you're doing and also how we can follow you. How can we find you? How can we be a part of this? What, what, where do we go to see what you're up to? Awesome. Well, um, thanks. So it's visible confidence. My website is visibleconfidence.com. Super easy to remember. Uh, I do um, online education. I also do workshops for corporations and okay. universities. Um, so more importantly for your audience, it would be the on online education piece. So basically all things confidence. I have a, an eight week confidence program that basically walks them through building the skill of confidence. Wow. There's a lot of, of confidence as a feeling but our feelings come and go and we kind of like confidence that stays, right? Sure. And so for that to happen, we need to build confidence as a skill. And it's not something a lot of us do. We're just told that confidence comes somewhere along the road to hard work and we're like, okay, work right. hard and it'll come, right. which that's not really true because as we become more competent, then we would be more confident in some ways it works but in a lot of ways we're still questioning ourselves sure. we're still paralyzed by fear we're still being held back by ourselves getting our own way and so what i have done is create a program that addresses the what i call the seven competencies of confidence mm -hmm. there's basically seven pillars and it's the seven things that each of our confidence is built on and so as we're building our confidence, we just build it on each of those little pillars. And my course walks you through that. Wow, that's super cool. So what I what I caught here too is that even someone who 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 has studied it, who has figured it out, has this, you know, this this platform yep. of helping people with confidence. There's probably yep. days where you wake up and you're not confident. Is that is that true? I mean, or, or, I mean so I think that's, that's important the, to see. Yeah, I, sure. I think people look at high achieving people, they look at people doing it and they assume they're never scared and they're always confident. Yeah. And it's like, oh, the first competency of the seven competencies of confidence is your relationship with fear. And so how do you see fear and what do you do with it? So do you chase it or do you run away? And so for me, I, I chase fear. Like when I know, sure. when I see something that I'm afraid of, I'm like, okay, I'm freaking out. I, I don't like a lot of times we want to back up and be like, no, I don't want to do that yeah. and go the other way, right? But like when I, in my talent area, in my, in the area that I'm passionate about, when I see something that I'm afraid of, I run towards it wow. and I figure out how to. Do it. And so I think if that is something that like people assume that we don't feel scared, but we all feel scared. Yeah. We all have to talk ourselves into it. It's just giving you the tools to do that and then readjusting your mindset so that you can recognize that and then have the tools to like to fix it. 
And that's, and that's what we do in every single area. So the first one is fear. And then the second one is um, the perception of your appearance. So we talk about how to, um, what do you think about your appearance and how does that affect sure. how you interact with the world around you? Uh, the next one is your, um, how much, how self-competent are you or self-reliant are you? Mm. Your, level, your level of self-reliance. So are you relying on your, um, your job or your title or your looks? Or yeah. else? Are you relying on yourself? Wow. That makes yeah, don't give me any more. Don't give me any more because I want them to come to your site. I want them to come see what you're doing, right? You know, you can't give them all up, right? You know, I want y'all and I want to come see what you're up to. So, okay, so final question. I mean, and this is awesome. You've been so much fun and I promise you we're going to do this again and I want to go Facebook Live with you so people can ask questions because this is fun, right? But um, yeah, that what, would, what would your one piece of advice for that person that is, is, has found their big but is struggling to start? What would your, your, you know, your, your, your biggest piece of advice to that person, whether it's starting a business or it's rekindling a relationship or it's going back to school or whatever that big is to them, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be entrepreneurship, but uh, you know, yeah. as a person who's had a lot of success in everything you've done, but also um, has had to start over and start doing things many times, what would that big um, thought or, or, or idea or, or piece of advice you can give to that person who's struggling starting pursuing their big? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I've started hearing this phrase, and I, I'm not sure where it came from, but I've heard it a few times, and it's fail fast. Mm. And I yeah. love that. Yeah. And it's so, it's so apparent in, in sports, in everything. Mm. And so I would just tell somebody to, to start, of course, but to fail fast. Because the quicker you fail, the quicker you find out what doesn't work, yeah, and good. then you just keep going. Because... I'll say one thing like walking and, and going things like clarity comes from movement. Yeah. And so the more times you go, not everything is a failure. It's just a redirection. It's like skiing. Success is not a straight line. It's like you're skiing sure. down a hill, zigzagging. And, and yeah. I, I would just say that I would say fail fast. And one of the things I always tell people is you have everything you need to get everything you need. So all the answers are inside. Just ask the right questions, listen to your answers, and then take action based on what you hear. Uh, that's so good. You have everything you need to do everything you need and fail fast. So guys, Chantel Anderson at visibleconfidence.com. Go check her out. She gave us three of them, but there's five more, four more of the, uh, of the seven pillars, if you will, of what she's up to, guys. What a cool interview. You are so inspiring. This is so much fun. I know everybody's going to love this and, and, and share it like crazy. So thank you, Chantel. You are amazing. I can't wait to continue oh, to follow you. what you're up to. This was a blast. Uh, guys, this is a start, guys. Thank you all so much for plugging in today, and we will catch up soon. Bye-bye.